we're talking about the rock obsession. You see, rock and roll is an obsession to millions and millions of people. It's not just uh, a fad. Not only is it an obsession, but if you let it go long enough, it will become a possession. Go ahead, the first one there, Brother Andrew. Yeah. Um, how, uh, how are we as far as seeing goes? Can you see that clearly or not? If not, say so, please. Can't see it very well? Anyone else? Cannot see the screen? Okay, we're having some trouble here, brother. I wonder if it would be possible to turn this light off just long enough to see. I want to make sure everybody can see. We'll just unplug that first. We'll see if it's any easier. I apologize if this hurts the video. Is that better? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry if that hurts the video, but, but people have to see. Okay, let's go to the next one. Rock and roll is a drug. Uh, rock and roll is a religion. This is an outdoor concert at the Castle Donington Heavy Metal Festival. We'll talk more about rock religion tonight. Rock and roll is one of the biggest religions on the face of the earth. It has literally billions of people all over the place that are worshiping it. It is an obsession. Now, uh, think about this for a minute. In six short years of junior and high school education in America, youngsters spend 10,500 hours listening to rock. I've got all the sources up here if you're interested later. 10,500 hours. That's more than they spend in school. So who's doing the teaching? The teachers or the rock stars? It's obvious, isn't it? Rock music reaches at least, at least 66.5 million people under the age of 19 in America. 66.5 million. And that's just in the States. That's not the rest of the world. Next one, please. This is an army for Antichrist. That's what the devil's trying to do. You see, they've got a uniform, they've got an attitude, they've got religious music, they're following a religion called rock and roll. See, we've come a long way from Elvis. Let's go to the next one, please. Uh, let's talk about it. See, Satan has something for everybody in every generation. He has a button to push on you and a button to push on me and one to push on your children, if you let him. We're going to see what rock obsession did for the people at the top. They were all obsessed with rock. That's how they got to the top. Most of them were just dishwashers and truck drivers and who didn't have any education. They were too dumb to do anything else, but they loved rock and roll, so they stuck it out for about 10 or 15 or 20 years and starved and lost their families and everything that was of any value, and finally they made it big. They hit the big time. They made millions. They found out there was nothing there. They had everything. And Elvis Presley was one of the best examples. Here, here's how Elvis looked at the end of his life. Okay, here's uh, Brother Andrew. Let's uh, go back there. Yeah, let's stop right there, please. This is Chuck Berry, famous 1950s rock star. Let's see what rock and roll did for Chuck. Next one, please. These are the Beatles. They're worshipped as gods. They were communists and antichrists. Do you realize that? That Paul McCartney of the Beatles admitted not too many years ago that he was a communist all those years? That means if you and I bought Beatles stuff, and I did, we were supporting communism. Um, also, John Lennon made some horrific comments about the Lord Jesus Christ, which we'll get into in some of our other seminars. But these people are worshipped as, as gods, and they hated Christ. Here's how they looked after six years on the top. See, these men are less than 30 years old. They're younger than me in this picture. Next one, please. Talking about rock obsession, this is a man named Jerry Garcia of a band called the Grateful Dead, a big 1960s psychedelic band. Here's how Jerry looks today. Not even 40 years old. We're talking about men that are barely 40 years old. This is what rock obsession does to the people that are involved. If it's doing that to them, what's it doing to the kids? Next one, please. These are the Rolling Stones when they started out. It looks like vests were in that year, 1964. Let's see how they looked after about six years. You can tell a lot about a person by their eyes. See, the eyes are the uh, window to the soul. And what you're seeing here is demons, devils. That big tongue logo, you see it all over the place on T-shirts, and you see it on little uh, things, chains that hang around car uh, mirrors. Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones said this. He said, especially now that we've got Rolling Stones records with the Kali tongue. Nobody's gotten into that yet, but that's Kali, the Hindu female goddess. 
It's a demon. It's a devil. This is something called a mark of satanic blessing. Kali, the devil of the Hindus, with a big bloody tongue hanging out of her mouth and a row of human heads around her neck, worshipped by millions in India, is the Rolling Stones' personal devil. And so they put her mark on all their stuff. And what do you know? It sells a million because there's devils at work in the music. Here's a picture of Kali. Next one, please. Uh, here's how John Lennon of the Beatles looked at the beginning of his career. Here's how he looked at age 40. You say, uh, rock and roll give you everything you want? Do you want to end up like this? Uh, he had an operation scheduled for a week uh, after his death. He never made it, of course, to have part of the roof of his mouth surgically inserted into his nose because he'd burn it out, burn out his nostrils, his uh, septum, after years and years of cocaine abuse. Next one, please. Sex and rock and roll. Rock and roll promotes sex, but it's not the sex that God wants us to have. Sex was created by God for one purpose only, to bring forth a godly seed, to bring man and woman together as one flesh, serving the Lord in a beautiful, wonderful, clean, and pure relationship. And Satan has done everything he can to make it dirty, filthy, rotten, and perverse until it reaches the point where we think the perverse is normal. No, it's not. Let's see what rock and roll says about sex. They say, oh, this is getting kind of heavy now. I'm getting a little uncomfortable, brother. Hey, mom and dad, you better be talking to your kids about this in the privacy of your own home. Don't you turn it over to some expert, somebody else that's not their parent. You, you say, well, I don't know how to deal with this thing. Show them what the Bible says about it. Your children are under such intense pressures, like no generation that ever came before, not like your generation and not like mine. It was bad then, but it's a whole lot worse now. What Satan is trying to tell young people is, fill your bodies with disease. Give up your virginity. Young men, you hold on to your virginity until God gives you a mate, until you can be married properly, scripturally. Young women, hold on to your virginity. It's a precious, precious thing, and once it's gone, it can never come back. Now, I'm not so foolish as to think that there aren't some that have already given it up. Not in, well, in the church? Yes. If you're faithful to confess your sins, Jesus Christ is faithful and just to forgive you for your sins. God the Father will wipe it all away. The blood of Christ to make the difference. It sure will. Man or woman, boy or girl, doesn't matter what you've been involved in in your life. Christ is not going to hold your past against you if you repent. This is Def Leppard. They were one of the biggest. Uh, first of all, let me give you some statistics. You think, well, that's kind of your opinion. I don't really have a problem. I know others have problems with this, but it's not in my house. Well, listen to this, please. Two and one half million teens a year get VD in America. Two and one half million a year. 3,000 a day get pregnant. 3,000 teenagers a day. AIDS is the seventh leading cause of death among 15 to 24 year olds. Number seven. There's more and more teenagers getting AIDS all the time. They didn't get it from homosexuality or dirty needle. They got it from sex. It's broken out into our population now. 27,000 new cases of sexually transmitted diseases in America each day. U.S. rape rate has increased by more than 700% since 1933. Child sexual abuse rose by 175% in four years between 81 and 85. Half a million abortions performed on teenagers every year. Half a million every year. You say, oh, that's not the church, though. 50 to 60% of evangelical church youth are involved in sexual activity, according to the study. 50, that's over half of young people who say, yes, Christ is my savior. Yes, I'm washed in the blood of Christ, and I'm having sex outside of marriage. Of 500 church youth surveyed, 62% said they'd participate in oral sex. Something's wrong. Something's real wrong. Def Leppard. Here's what drummer uh, Def Leppard said, Rick Allen, about their first American tour. He said, blimey, I went mad. I went nuts over there. Women left, right, and center. It was great being the support band because you had time to stand at the side of the stage and pick out all the best birds. I ended up getting a few undesirable diseases, but I had a good laugh over it. You see, these rock groups are saying, yeah, I got VD, but it was kind of funny, really. Is it funny? 
for the millions of teenagers, of young people that never thought it would happen to them who woke up with the burning blisters of herpes. Was it funny for them? No, they're not laughing. Don't believe what these liars are telling you about sex. Incidentally, you know what? If young people and others, if every man and woman, boy and girl waited until God gave them the right mate and stayed faithful to that mate, there'd be no VD. There'd be no need for abortions for unwanted children. There'd be no AIDS, would there? Let's go to the next one, please. Uh, incidentally, the uh, man on the left of Def Leppard is named Steve Clark, 30 years old. He just died, alcohol poisoning. You see, he believed that this lie of the devil was true and that he could find happiness. Well, he lived in a castle and he got chauffeured around in Rolls Royce limousines and he had all the horrors he ever wanted. Now he's dead and in hell and not spending any money. Next one, please. Uh, this is David Coverdale of the group White Snake. David Coverdale got married. Wasn't that a wonderful thing to do? Here's what he said about his wife. She's the ultimate woman. She is a sex goddess. And yes, she is my whore. How should I be married to somebody like that? Young people are ingesting these messages into their minds when they listen to the music, when they get the magazines, when they watch the videos. Next one, please. Uh, rock and Roll Promotes Homosexuality. That's uh, Stephen Percy of Rat, Paul Stanley of Kiss, laid a big smooch on each other. Next one, please. These come from rock magazines. Daryl Hall and John Oates is not heavy metal, but Daryl Hall on the left is dressed up like a woman and has admitted in print in Rolling Stone magazine that the idea of having sex with a man does not turn him off. You know what the Bible says about homosexuality? It is abomination in the sight of God. It is not an alternate lifestyle. People were not born with the wrong genes. God did not cheat them or shortchange them. They made a decision somewhere in their life that they wanted to be a pervert. And God's going to punish that. Now, it's not any worse than any other sin. God, Christ died for the homosexual. He died for the harlot. He died for the thief and the criminal. He sure did. He died for you and me. But you can't play games with God and get away with it. These guys say, yeah, sure, why not? Next one, please. Next one, please. That was the inside of the Hall & Oates album where one of the band members was naked. This is uh, Bruce Springsteen in concert a few years ago, and he'd lay a big smooch on his saxophone player at the end of every show. And people said, well, that's just a joke. What's funny about it? Next one, please. This is a rock group called Queen. Uh, big heavy metal stars sold millions and millions of records dressed up as women on one of their videos. Now, the man on the left with the mustache, I think it's a man, on the left with the mustache is Freddie Mercury, singer for Queen. Do you know what happened to Freddie in November? He died of AIDS. He died of AIDS. Do you know how much money Freddie left to AIDS research? $50 million, which was a very small part of his fortune. So you've got a pervert who made over 50 million, he may have made 150 million dollars, and now he's in hell. How do I know that? Because he never accepted Christ. Because he went out saying, uh, I really feel for people that have this disease. He got the disease because he loved his sin, and he didn't want to give it up. So you see, the people at the top have paid the price for being obsessed with rock, and you'll pay the price too if you allow it to take root in your home, your life. Next one, please. Uh, this is a group called Aerosmith. Now, you look at these guys. Most of them were too ugly to get dates in high school, and that's why they've done the things they've done and put out the songs they have. Uh, you listen to this uh, song by Aerosmith called Dude Looks Like a Lady. Never judge a book by its cover, or who you're going to love by your lover. Love put me wise to her love in disguise. She had the body of a Venus. Lord, imagine my surprise. Dude looks like a lady. Let me take a peek, dear. Do me, do me, do me all night. Ooh, what a funky lady. Ooh, he was a lady. Talking about having a homosexual affair. Listen to these statistics about AIDS. The World Health Organization said that over 150 million would have AIDS in 1991. Atlanta Center for Disease Control said one man out of four, ages 24 to 45, carries the AIDS virus in New York City. One out of four. Why is this happening? It's not just a homosexual problem anymore. Why is it happening? It's because perverts at the top of the rock heap are preaching this message to their congregations by the millions. Next one, please. Uh, this is a rock star named David Bowie, lives in a castle over in England. That's what David does for fun, dresses up like a woman. Next one, please. 
This is David Bowie hanging out with Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones. So if you ever wondered whether Mick was a little funny or not, now you know. Next one, please. Next one, please. That's Mick in concert doing perverse things. This is a man. Got a ring in his nose like a pig. His name's Perry Farrell, and he's also admitted in print in Propaganda Magazine that he is into the Santeria religion. Do you know what Santeria is? Satanism. Remember hearing about Metamoros, Mexico, where they chopped up people and cannibalized them in the name of the devil? That's what this man's into. The band's called Jane's Addiction. They're big. Let's go to the next one, please. That's a man. His name's Sebastian Bach, and he's head of a group called Skid Row. They've got a song on a Slave to the Grind album called Psycho Love. It says, haunt my house of pain and feel my psycho love. Ashes to ashes and lust to lust. That's one of the biggest records on the charts. Next one, please. There's Skid Row. Let's get a close-up. Nice, huh? You see, only the demon-possessed and the mentally insane mutilate their bodies. But that's what rock and roll is full of. Next one. This is who? George Michael. George Michael had an album called Faith. It was the number one album of 88. And one of the biggest songs was called I Want Your Sex. What's your definition of dirty, baby? What do you consider pornography? Don't you know I love you till it hurts me, baby? Don't you think it's time you had sex with me, sex with me, sex with me, have sex with me? Why is VD out of control? Why are there half a million teen abortions every year? Why? Because these people are preaching that message into the kids' heads. And they're believing it. And if you stand up against it, you watch the heat come your way, brother and sister. When you have the audacity to stand up and say, that's wrong. God didn't intend for this to happen. Next one, please. Oh, boy. Who's that? Madonna. Madonna is the highest paid whore in the world. I said Madonna is the highest paid whore in the world. And that's a Bible word, by the way. A whore or a harlot or a prostitute is somebody that sells their body to make money, and that's just what she's done. She made over $50 million in four years. She's a harlot, and she's teaching your young girls, your precious daughters, the fruit of your body, the Lord's reward, your flesh and blood. She's teaching them how to be a harlot. Don't you let your little girls dress up like she does. Don't you let them get that filth and bring it in and listen to it in your house. Oh, but they're in their bedroom and they bought their stereo. That's your bedroom. That's your stereo. That's your house. That's your daughter and son. They don't have a right to do those things under your roof. And if you feel a holy, righteous anger in your heart, don't take it out on your kids. It's your fault, Mom and Dad. And I say it to you in love. You let it come through the door. You know the way to deal with it? Get on your knees. Say, oh, God, I repent. Now, God, help me deal with my children in love. Then you go to your kids and say, I can't have it. We can't have this. You're too precious to me. Like a virgin, that's a joke to her. Next one, please. Nice role model for young girls, huh? This is Madonna. You need to know this about Madonna. If you're a fan of Madonna, young people, let me tell you some things. These are facts. Madonna's first acting job was in a porno flick. It was called A Certain Sacrifice. Madonna exposed herself. That means she made herself naked for cameras in spring 1990 issue of Vanity Fair. Madonna had a video in 1991 called Justify My Love. Here's what the, uh, here's what the lost said about it. Some lost, unregenerate reviewer didn't even know Christ. Here's what he says. The video features bisexuality, men dressed as women, group sex, and suggestions of sadomasochism. Madonna says not everyone's comfortable with this, but these fantasies exist in all human beings. Is that true? If you've come to Christ, you still thinking about this junk? No, Christ gives us a new mind, and the devil will try and insert that filth back in again, but that's not from Jesus, and that's not from you, and you rebuke that in the name of Christ, and you flee and repent away from all fornication. Next one, please. Madonna also blasphemes Christ. Uh, she said about her movie, Truth or Dare, she said, my favorite scene is the one of two men kissing. I think it's a beautiful thing. Well, God doesn't think it's a beautiful thing. He says it's abomination in the book of Leviticus. Uh, Madonna says, and like a prayer, when you call my name, it's like a little prayer. I'm down on my knees. I want to take you there. Your voice can take me there. In the midnight hour, I can feel your power. It's a hymn to Lucifer. One of the biggest songs on MTV. Next one, please. 
This is from her video. This is the kind of stuff on MTV. If this shocks you, brother and sister, if you have MTV in your home, your kids are seen it 24 hours a day, whether you know it or not. Next one, please. Next one, please. Who's that? New kids on the block. Oh, boy. There's, there can't be anything wrong with them. Come on, now. Listen. New kids on the block have made about $91 million. $91 million. How'd you like to tithe off that? What would $91 million do for First Baptist Church here? Or for this community? What kind of an outreach could you do with $91 million worldwide? But instead, it went in the, into the pockets of these chumps. And they're preaching sex, too. They have a song called Hold On. It says, girl, let's rock around the clock. We can dance and never stop. Come on, girl, hold on tight. I know you want to rock tonight. Through the night and to the day, we can chase our blues away. So grab a hold. Don't lose control. What does the term rock and roll mean? Anybody know? Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely. The term rock and roll came out of the Cleveland, Ohio gutter in 1954, coined by a disc jockey named Alan Freed, and it had to do with having sex in the back seat of a car. Rock and roll. Rock around the clock. That's just exactly what that stuff means. Let's see what new kids on the block do in concert. They rip off their shirts and all the girls scream. Well, what's wrong with that? They're putting a spirit of lust into your precious daughters at an early age, so that later on Satan can fill them with the true heavy metal junk. Next one, please. Oh, incidentally, new kid Donnie Wahlberg was arrested for arson. There's his mugshot. Here's another. Next, please. He's a criminal. This is the average teenager's room if they're new kids on the block fans. You re remember what we were talking about in Exodus? This is idolatry. This is the golden calf right here. The posters on the bedroom. There's worship going on. It is a chamber for worship, dedicated to worship. It's a drinking of the cup of devils. You need to rip that stuff off the wall and throw it away, young people. Next one, please. Drugs and rock and roll. Let's see. This is Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols, died at 21 of a heroin overdose, sticking a dirty needle in his vein. Death. The wages of sin is death. Next one, please. Uh, Van Halen bass player, Michael Anthony, drunk out of his mind. Alcohol is a drug. And he'll get a hold of you. That glass of wine, that martini to unwind, whatever it is, that beer on Saturday with the game, it'll get you. It'll grab you. It's wrong. It's poison for the Christian. Next one, please. Uh, Wasted Youth, Guns N' Roses. They had a song called uh, Mr. Brownstone. It says, I used to do a little, a little wouldn't do, stuck it in the middle, and I shot it in the needle, and it drove me out of my mind. Needle junkies. Next one, please. Guns N' Roses, biggest rock group in the world. Next one. Paul McCartney being busted for marijuana possession. Next one, please. Paul McCartney smuggled drugs in his children's clothes to get through customs at airports. Next one, please. Nikki Six and Vince Neil of Motley Crue. Let's get a close-up of Nikki Six's guitar. Little needles all over it. He wrote a song called Dancing in, uh, on Glass. And the lyrics said, I engrave my veins with style. Next one. We're talking about people that have probably 100 million in the bank. This is Motley Crue. Here's what they said. Here's what they said, not me. Nikki Six of Motley Crue says, we're blanking junkies and drug addicts and cokeheads and alcoholics living and hanging out in tattoo parlors and blanking whorehouses in the South. Next one. Suicide and rock and roll. Rock and roll promotes it. Here's how. This is from a rock magazine. Ozzy Osbourne, uh, there have been many, and there's too many to list here, many young people who have blown their brains out while listening to one of Ozzy's songs called Suicide Solution. Ozzy says, I'm a crazy guy, I always will be. I'm blanking mad, and I know that. That's what keeps me going. My madness keeps me alive. My madness keeps me here. My madness keeps me writing songs. I just blanking drink, I get blanked up. If it kills me, I don't care. See, he's going to a Christless grave, and he can't get there fast enough. And he wants you to do it, too. Well, how does music cause somebody to commit suicide? Didn't the kids just have problems to start with? And they'll blame it on the parents every time, right? Those young people have been isolated by the music. They get off in their own little worship chamber there and put the headphones on because they can't deal with life, because mom and dad are in little worlds of their own. And before you know it, the demonic spirit starts speaking in their mind. 
and saying your mom and dad hates you, they don't love you, nobody understands you, just kill yourself, just get it over with. Young people or anybody else in this room, if you ever get to that point, listen good please, Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. That's love. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, John 15, 13. Christ lay down his life for you. And I love you in the name of the Lord. Don't you ever think nobody loves you? Jesus Christ loves you more than even mom or dad ever could. Next one, please. There's Ozzy. Suicide solution. Suicide's no solution to anything. It just gives you problems for eternity that you wouldn't have if you'd come to Christ. Next one, please. Judas Priest is probably the best example of suicide in music. Uh, there was a well-publicized court case in Reno, Nevada a couple of summers ago where backmass messages were found in their music. The song was called Beyond the Realms of Death. Two young people blew their heads off with shotguns and one lived for three years with half a face. And he went to a lawyer and they filed deposition and sued CBS Records and sued Judas Priest, said there were messages in the music and went to court. Messages were found that said things like, do it, do it, do it. My evil spirit sings. Mad son, you'll be damned. Demonic voices in the music speaking to the minds of these kids, driven crazy until they blew their own heads off. And it was all thrown out of court. The judge said there are messages there, but it's just a coincidence. Next one, please. Metallica has an album, an old album, called Ride the Lightning. The idea is play with Satan, you die. And they have a song on there called Fade to Black. Life, it seems, will fade away, drifting further every day, getting lost within myself. Nothing matters, no one else. I have lost the will to live. Simply nothing more to give. There's nothing more for me. Need the end to set me free. The end is not going to set them free. It's going to put them in hell forever. And then comes judgment. As disappointed that a man wants to die. But after this, the judgment, Hebrews 9, 27. You and I will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And without the blood of Christ covering our sins, we are lost into the lake of fire. But the good news is, with the blood covering our sins, he says, come closer, son or daughter. Come closer, brother, sister. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Isn't that going to be a marvelous day for us, but not for them? Don't believe these liars. Next one, please. Violence and rock and roll. Rock and roll promotes it. Let's see how. Here's an Iron Maiden, they've just killed a woman that's ripped down one of their posters. And so what the rock stars are saying is, if anybody comes against your music, just kill them. Young people are doing it. They're killing their parents. We could give you list after list, name after name, case after case of young people who believe these lies and have taken knives and guns and killed their own parents. Next one, please. Uh, guns and Roses, you want to talk about violence? Use Your Illusion 2, one of the biggest selling tapes of all time. Brand new, get in the ring, here's what the lyrics say. I'd like to crush your head tight in my vice. Pain, blank you. Blank my blank and blank. Antagonize me, mother blank. Get in the ring, blank, and I'll kick your blank little blank punk. One of the biggest sellers. Now Mozart doesn't, couldn't hold a candle to genius like that, right? <laughs> it's just filth, profanity, and obscenity being played on the public airwaves, being supported by your tax dollars, being ingested into the minds of your kids and your neighbor's kids. Next one, please. Uh, that's a Guns N' Roses album that sold over 9 million copies, and the woman in the lower right-hand corner has just been raped. Next one, please. This is a group called Poison. They've got a song all about rape called I Want Action. It says, if I can't have her, I'll take her and make her. I want action tonight. Do you know what's going on here, brother and sister? There's not a father, a brother, or a son in this room that doesn't have a mother, wife, or daughter, or sister somewhere, somehow. These groups, like Guns N' Roses and Poison, are training a whole generation of youth to rape your sister, rape your wife, rape your daughter. Now, are you going to put up with it? Are you going to let that kind of stuff come into your house? Are you going to let your children associate with people that listen to that kind of mess? Next one. Uh, this is, well, what about rap music? Well, what about it? This is NWA, and the guy at the bottom there, they've just knocked somebody on the ground, he's got a pistol, he's going to blow his brains out. The vast majority of rap music is totally filthy and violent. Um, here's some lyrics from NWA song called Blank the Police. Pull him out a silly club so you stand with a blank badge and a gun in your hand. Take off the gun so you can see what's up, and we'll go at it, punk. I'm blanking you up. I'm a sniper. 
taking out a cop or two without a gun and a badge. What do you got? A sucker in a uniform waiting to get shot. One of the members of uh, NWA named Dr. Dre, his name's Andrew Young. Uh, here's what uh, Christian Parent Alert said, August 1991. NWA member and producer Dr. Dre assaulted D. Barnes, that's a woman, host of the syndicated Pump It Up video show. Dr. Dre confronted Barnes, hit her in the face and upper body and stamped on her hands. Threw her through a door and here's what he said. I just did it, you know. Ain't nothing you can do now by talking about it. Besides, it ain't no big thing. I just threw her through a door. Let me tell you what's happening with rap music. This is not a racial thing. Do you know what they're doing? Do you know what Satan is doing through rap music? He's getting all the minorities, all the blacks and the browns and Chicanos and all the other um, Latinos, he's getting them all fired up to hate the white man. And at the same time, Satan has neo-Nazi punk for the white skinheads. And what he's trying to do is light a fuse in the cities which are going to blow one of these days and make the riots of the 60s look like a birthday party because out of chaos comes new world order. First, you've got to wipe out the old world order. And he's going to do it with blood in the streets. He's going to do it with automatic weapons in the hands of 16-year-old punks, listening to groups like NWA. Next one, please. Pray against it. This is Luther Campbell of the group Two Live Crew, totally filthy porno, being arrested. Next one, please. Oh, they threw it out of court. Luther's real happy now. Next one, please. Spiritualism, sorcery, and witchcraft. Rock and roll promotes it. Here's how. Ordination of rock music leaders. Musicians, promoters, producers, distributors, and others involved in the dissemination of rock music are ordained. Rock music is viewed at this time as the primary tool of Satanists. This was a major satanic convocation that was held in Washington, D.C. just a couple years ago. You see, to the Satanists, rock and roll is one of the most powerful tools they've got. Next one, please. Who's that? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is not that cute little boy doing those dance steps anymore. Michael and Jackson has tapped into the main power line of Satanism. This is from the Thriller video. The song there was called Thriller. You're out of time. They're out to get you. Demons closing in on every side. They will possess you unless you change that number on the dial. And no one's going to save you from the beast about to strike. The Lord Jesus Christ saved me from the beast. He saved me from the Antichrist. He saved you. His precious blood bought our salvation. Amen. We're purchased with a price. We're saved and on our way to heaven. We don't have to worry about this filth. You've got to deal with it every day, yes, but you don't have to worry about it. When you feel that blood boiling, you feel that anger coming, oh, we've got to do something. Yes, and it happens on your knees. Next one, please. Uh, that's from the Thriller video. Is this what the dead in Christ are going to look like on Resurrection Day? Nah, you'll see this in hell. Next one, please. Uh, we'll talk about Pan, one of the major gods, the goat god of rock and roll. Let's see. Pan is another name in the Satanic Bible for Satan, according to this book by Tex Mars. Next one, please. Looks like Elton John's hair transplant worked. <laughs> Elton John's a homosexual, and he admitted it. So if you like Elton John music, you're supporting the music of a homosexual. Also, he had this special uh, uh, phrase on his coat of arms made for him, and at the top is Pan, the goat god. You see, these people are worshiping devils. Next one, please. This is Mick Jagger of Rolling Stones. He went to Morocco, where they had this special tribe called the Jujuka that call up Pan, the devil. They call up the devil at the rites of Pan every year, and Mick recorded their music and put it into Rolling Stones tape steel wheels. Then they made $110 million in concert. Next one, please. There's a Rolling Stones album, an old one with the foot of Pan on the inside. They're worshiping devils and they're bragging about it. Next one. Paul McCartney holding the pans, the pan pipes, pipes of Pan. Next one, please. Satanism and rock and roll. We're about done. These are all things that the rock obsession promotes. And this is the worst of all. Let's see. This is uh, Living Color. A big uh, band got a lot of awards a couple years ago. And the member second from the left named Corey Glover is doing the Cornuto. That's the sign of allegiance to the devil. He's showing everybody who his Lord and Master is. You can find that on the back of the Satanic Bible. Next one. This is the kind of stuff young people see in the record stores. Next one. It started here 
years ago, 1979, ACDC, Highway to Hell, and the member on the right is named Bon Scott. He's wearing a pentagram necklace. He died by choking to death on his own vomit. It took him two days to fight him in the backseat of a friend's car. He was on the Highway to Hell, and that's where he is right now. Next one, please. This is uh, Blackie Lawless of the group Wasp drinking blood out of a human skull. I said, well, they don't do that anymore. Well, so what? Next one, please. They did it then. This is a group called Slayer, where people are having their insides ripped out after they've died and gone to hell. These are all the covers of tapes and albums and records. It's everywhere. It's in the videos. Next one, please. Eating dead body parts out of a coffin. Next one, please. Blaspheming Christ. Next one, please. Blaspheming Jesus. Instead of Jesus, it's Elvis. Did Elvis Presley die for you and me? Would Elvis have shed one drop of his blood for your sins or mine? Elvis didn't go to the cross for you, and he didn't go to the cross for me. So stop worshiping Elvis. Elvis is also not flipping hamburgers up in Michigan somewhere. Elvis is dead. Next one, please. Here's a group called Celtic Frost, and they've made uh, a dead Jesus a slingshot. Jesus Christ isn't dead. He's alive. He's sitting at the right hand of God the Father. He's come to judge the quick and the dead. Jesus Christ is very much alive. Next one, please. Ozzy Osbourne wanted to put out this record, Blaspheming Christ. Next one, please. Johnny Rotten and the Sex Pistols hanging on a cross. Next, please. Terrence Trent and Darby hanging on a cross. Here's where it ends. The wages of sin is death. This is the payoff for the best servants that Satan ever had. Here they are. Brian Jones of Rolling Stones, he died at 27 years old. Here's how he looked at 27. Drowned in a swimming pool, nobody knows how. He's making a little joke here, see? He's saying, Satan, Lucifer is the source of my power, ha ha. All my wealth, everything I've got came from the devil, and I love it. Then he died, now he's in hell. Next one, please. Jimi Hendrix died by choking to death on his own vomit in 1970, and he's not jamming on the guitar, and he's not spending any money. What does the Bible say about hell? It is a place of thick darkness, of torment, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. It's where people have all their desires, but they can't get them fulfilled. And after that comes judgment in the lake of fire. Some deal, some bargain. Next one, please. Janice Joplin died of a heroin overdose. Her body was riddled with venereal disease when they found her. Next one, please. These are people at the top that had it all. Jim Morrison died in a bathtub in Paris of a heart attack, drug abuse. Next one, please. This uh, drummer in the chair that says not to be taken away is named Keith Moon. He was a drummer for The Who, one of the biggest rock and roll bands of all time. He died of drug overdose. Here's how he looked before he died at about the age of 30. Next one, please. This is a group called Leonard Skinner. This album came out. They went on tour. Their plane went down, and three of them burned alive in the wreckage. Satan's little joke before it happened. Next one, please. Bon Scott of ACDC. He said, I'm on the highway to hell, and if you could talk to him right now in hell, what would he say? Would he say, go on, buy more tapes, buy more records? Is that what Bon Scott would tell you today? No, he'd say, I'm in torment in these flames. He'd say, get those records, get those tapes, get those posters, burn them, destroy them, don't come here. Next one, please. This is John Bottom of Led Zeppelin. He died of drinking too much vodka uh, in Jimmy Page's bed. Next one, please. We know how John Lennon ended up. He's in hell now. He made a career out of mocking Christ, and God is not mocked, and God gave him space to repent, and he didn't repent, and when those bullets tore in his body, he didn't even have time to repent. Now he's in hell, and he's not spending $250 million or enjoying his palaces. Next one, please. This is a bass player for a group called Metallica named Cliff Burton. They were on tour a few years ago. The bus hit a patch of ice. He was asleep in a bunk. He went halfway out the window, then the bus fell on him and crushed him. Next one, please. Uh, the latest, uh, one of the latest members here of KISS on the left, his name's Eric Carr. He was only about 40 years old. He'd been on the top of the world for 10 years. Millions and millions of dollars made with KISS. He had everything that a sinful, filthy-hearted man could have. And then suddenly he got cancer at 40. And they cut the tumors out, and things were going okay. And then he had a cerebral hemorrhage, and he sat in a wheelchair for about a month and then died. Some bargain. 
some deal. Next one, please. Uh, these next three are books the Lord's allowed us to write, and those will be available throughout the uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Next, please. Do the next one, please. Christianity versus the occult. It's your choice. It's up to you. You're either going to have the cup of devils, or you're going to go with Jesus all the way. Here's the list. Rock music promotes alcoholism, drug addiction, suicide, sexual perversion, whoremongering, adultery, violence, rape, murder, witchcraft, the occult, paganism, new age, false religions, Satanism, blasphemy, and death. Now, who'd want to have anything to do with that? Brother and sister, thank you for your kind attention. I appreciate it very much. You've been given some very heavy things to think about today, especially the young people. You can think about them, or you can do something about them. That's your choice. That's your challenge. It's up to you. You can think about all these things, or you can do something about it.